Hi everyone, this is part two of the reverse foot rigging tutorial and uh, let, me pick up where, let me pick up where we left off. Um, we made this control shape that controls the rig. You can see that moves that around there. Let me hide the geometry. And what we want to do is make the behavior of, say, um, heel tapping, coming up on the toe, oops, wrong one, coming up on the toe, or uh, rolling the ball, the ankle, like that, rolling the ball of the foot, like that. We want those three behaviors to be embedded in some sliders. Now, the, the um, one way that we're familiar with is to come here to Animation, Parameter Editors, and make some parameters that we then populate this control shape with. So let's say, for example, um, we make one called heel, and we go from minus 5 to plus 5, and we say add. And that puts that over here that in this custom attribute. We can make toe and roll. Okay, so, you know, any custom attribute we want, we would then hook that up using Reaction Manager. But I want to grow upon this. I don't want this to, to be where you guys stopped because this is not going to be very useful to your animators. You have to keep in mind that animators do their best work when all they do is animate. You don't want them to fight your rig. You don't want them to be um, sitting down and opening up your max file and wondering, okay, so where, how do I control this rig? Where's all the stuff? You want that stuff in this viewport right here next to what they're animating. Don't make them come over here to the Modify tab or the Motion tab and dig and find the answers. Um, the most they should do is open up um, their layers and then you can very clearly have different parts of the body hidden um, and have master controls for um, uh, your rig. So make life easier for your animators and make the rig easy to use. Don't make them go search for stuff. Um, there's a lot of animators that they've specialized and all they do is animate and they don't even know how to rig so uh, make it easy for them and, and by doing so you'll make yourself more valuable to your studio you'll be a more professional artist and uh, life will be good all right so this is old school we're not going to do this let's go up here to edit delete and delete all parameters and we just wipe those out now the only use for this control shape is we're going to keyframe it for uh, positions um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to put our sliders and our manipulations in our viewport. So I'm going to turn grid on and go to a top view. And I want to remind you that the, this grid represents a, a unit of measure. If you are up here in Customize and you go to Unit Setup, you can see that I'm currently using the metric system. Viva la metric system, all right? And I'm not using US standard and I'm not using custom or generic units. So that means with meters that each box is a meter. Let's prove that. I'm going to make a box and I'm going to make it a one by one by one box. And there you can see it fits pretty close to a grid square. That's one meter. So if we make our own custom sliders, I'll close that and open up my, my layers. If we make our own custom sliders for animators to use, we just have to understand that sliding them through a range of motion here, let's just set that up, um, is going to be based largely on how big we make them in a scale. So let me review here. If you go to customize unit setup and you're using generic units, then each one of these boxes is going to stand for like 10 generic units. If you come up here and you go to metric, like I have, that's one meter, one meter. So keep that in mind. I'm going to go to the Snap tool, right click and turn on grid points. And then I'm going to create a rectangle and I'm going to just snap a rectangle that's six boxes wide and so if this black line is my zero mark I know that to the right is one meter two meter three meter and to the left is minus one meter minus two meters 
minus 3 meters. Okay, let's keep that in mind. And I can now um, turn off grid points, turn, put, it, put it back on vertex. Okay, and now let's create a circle. And the idea is now we're making our own custom sliders here. Just like I've got this radius slider with this, this kind of gizmo that goes up and down, we're making one in the viewport so that we, I can slide this thing back and forth and that can control our animation. We can keyframe these things. So not done yet, let's go text, click right there. I, I typed in heel tapping before so it defaulted that. You might see something like this, max text, and it might be massive, right? So that might be what it'll look like. Just type in what you want. I've got heel tapping and then scale that thing down to, to something appropriate. Right there. And it's a dark color. I need to make that a little bit more visible. And let's make that this color right here. I'll make that the same color. And let's get the circle in there as well. Okay, so the text becomes a child to that box. And this um, will eventually be a child to this box, but not yet. So when I grab this box, it'll all come with. Okay, so we want this circle to slide back and forth inside this rectangle. So let's let's control its behavior a little bit. Let's go to hierarchy, link info. It defaults to pivot. I want you to click on the link info button and lock down all its behaviors. We can't rotate it, we can't scale it, and we can't move it on the Y and the Z. All we can do is move it on the X. And even if I try, it won't let me do it. It will only move on the X. So that's what we want. <coughs> okay. And now let's go to the motion tab here. I, I can't, I've just locked out rotation and scale by going here, rotation scale. Um, and what I'm going to do is select the X position and assign a controller. I'm going to assign a float limit. And what comes up is a window that asks, okay, what's the upper limit of this slider? Remember, this is one meter boxes. So I'm going to say three. And the lower limit is minus three meters. And so we'll just do minus three. And we'll close that. And now check it out. This thing can't slide beyond minus three or plus three. And because you have come over here to the hierarchy and locked out everything else, it's pretty much locked down. So now is the time to make that a child to this rectangle. And now this shape goes wherever you want it to be. Okay, so heel tapping. Let's put that someplace useful for an animator. How about over here to the outside of the foot? <coughs> and then we have everything selected here. I'm going to just make a copy. And let's make two of the copies. And so I'm going to click on this one. Let's call that Toe Rollin'. and ball rolling and hey we got to fix this perfect okay so these three sliders are going to affect let me hide the geometry oops this will be my heel tapping this will be my toe rolling, and this will be my ball rolling. All right, let's hook that up. Turn off grid. Close that for now. Let's go to Reaction Manager. Animation, Reaction Manager. I'll select my first one here, which is heel tapping. And I want to make a master. So this green button here, add master. And it's this circle. 
and remember it's the left and right x position of that circle that's going to give us the value so we go transform position x and there's that bezier float that there's that limit that we put in of plus three and minus three okay so we need a slave to that what what's going to react when we wiggle that circle it's going to be that heel so we say add slave and we click on that heel bone let's make sure we get it right and we want to transform the rotation and i know that it's just the y the y rotation if it doesn't work then you can safely assume maybe you got the wrong rotation so y um, and <coughs> Because this foot, when I select this thing, can go down and it can go up, we have three states we want to make. So I'm going to select this and just click this twice, and that gives me state two and state three. And state two, remember, it has a positive value of three, and state three has a negative value of three. That's the range of this slider, positive three and negative three. That's why I typed in 3 and negative 3. So I'm going to select state 2, go to edit mode. I'm going to rotate that up. And it captured that value. It's a crazy number right now. I mean, I really don't think that, I don't know, 66 quadrillion. I don't, I don't even know what that number is. But I do know that if I get out of this and I close it and I open that thing back up, it's a little more sensible. So don't panic if that number looks weird. Okay, let's go to state three, edit, and rotate that down, and turn it off. And it looks like nothing happened here. Let's hit refresh, and there. Now we've got a understandable graph that when we slide this ball gives us the behavior we want. So we've got a little popping in the IK joint there. That's something I'll have to resolve. But uh, for now, this works. And so let's, let's go ahead and, and set up the other two. This one, toe rolling and ball rolling, is not a three-state system. It's a two-state system. But it'll still work. So I'm going to go make this my master there. And remember, it's the transform x. And let's make the slave, which is that reverse toe and it's around take my word for it the Z it doesn't make any sense to me maybe you guys can make some comments in, in uh, the YouTube video and tell me why it goes from Y on one to Z on the other okay so I need some I need I got state zero or state one let's make another state and let's make that positive three so for this state, I'm going to turn edit mode, I'm going to rotate that bone up. Turn it off, let's see how we did. Grab this, it works. Notice that when I'm at zero and go to the left in my negative range, nothing happens. And I go over here between zero and positive three, I get what I want. And that's just because I only have two states. So if I made a third state, state three, and I made this minus three, and then I clicked on this and went edit, and I rotated that toe bone down, I could achieve that, but frankly, our feet don't behave this way. I would have to go through the ground. So no need. I can select this state, blow it away, and we can do this. Oh, I must have broken it somehow. All right, so I'll just delete this. And let's get rid of that. Go back to here, our master, let's say slave. That slave is this bone right here. Transform around the Z. Let's make a second state. This one's minus three, or plus three. And turn on edit. Rotate that up turn that off and we're back in business okay let's do ball rolling make the slave that is this bone right here transform must have grabbed the wrong one
Okay, second state. Three. Select that. Up. Turn it off. Let's see how we did. It works. So we've got ball rolling, toe rolling, and heel tapping all in our viewport. We can close this. Let's get the geometry out again. And now the next step is to select the geometry, apply the skin modifier, and make the vertices of this geometry talk to those bones through the skinning process. So there you have it. I hope it's helpful. Please ask questions um, if uh, anything doesn't make sense.